Hello and welcome back to Everybody Loves Raikin, our 5th edition live play that meets on Tuesday nights. Last time we met, the party was uh, finishing gathering the info on uh, Tatsuya's contacts uh, from uh, Laramenda's spell, and Cyrus was dealing uh, with uh, big feelings about a big fish he caught by accident. Um, brought I'm that to the... <laughs> it was this big. Brought that to Laramendus, uh and decided maybe this is something that we should look into. Uh, they performed some communes uh, to try and uh, find out, you know, what kind of timeline maybe they had, uh, since they've got this other stuff going on with coffers and the and the army still. Largely, the army's training has been handed off. Uh, to the uh, Tritons, and that seems to be going very well. Um, though, uh, Riken is still, like, wants to be there doing the things. Um, uh, but in the midst of trying to understand this potential Abeleth problem, uh, <laughs> Laramendus invoked the name of an old frenemy, Brendan, uh, whom they met in the Feywild while trying to rescue Riken. Uh, and because chaos, uh, he was able to uh, take control of, of Cyrus' body temporarily, shunting Cyrus, his consciousness, into what he called the mind space, uh, where he uh, carried on a conversation both with Cyrus and with Laravenda simultaneously uh, and gave them a uh, truncated history of the Abolus, uh telling them, you know, I'm not supposed to tell you any of this, but no one's going to believe you anyway, uh, and proceeded to inform them that the Abolus uh, were older than the gods, uh, had created uh, a bunch of things and ruled over the fish and the people and everything, and then had been smote by the gods and sent into the plane of water, uh, and are, have been planning for millennia, centuries, thousands and millions, or however long the world's been around, uh, how to overthrow the gods. Um, <laughs> and then the last little nugget he gave them was that tritons tend to worship, uh, Abeleth, uh, which uh, <laughs> got Vendar very worried. Um, so, we are in the Magnificent Mansion. Uh, a couple of communes uh, have been cast to try and understand uh, what can be done about this Abeleth. Uh, I think the last thing that you learned, Laramundus and company, uh, was that you could potentially sacrifice... Cyrus to the Aboleth, and as long as the Aboleth never became aware that you wished him back, or resurrected him, or whatever, uh, however you go about doing it, uh, then that could at least make the Aboleth no longer your problem. So we'll pick it up um, there. Um, I, I do believe most people are here for this at this point, physically. Uh, I think well, everyone had been in the room from Brandon summoning them, <laughs> if they weren't already I, there. I got pulled in, but after Brandon left, I went back to... Right, but then everybody came into the yeah, mansion that... to do the commune. Oh. All right. So yeah. it, but he still has his workshop, so he... Yeah, I'm probably... Unless he oh, would have oh. wanted to come over to us, he would be in the mansion, but... It's pretty um, reasonable now that, awesome. like, anything yeah. important going on, you're all informing each other over the bond. Yeah. yeah. I'm a low cat. Um, alright, so, then, whomstever wished to be present for the commune uh, is present as the, uh, I think you failed one commune, so you've done three communes? Out of yes. six. <laughs> yeah, we failed the 25%, succeeded in the 50%. Yeah. Um, and then I think Simular Mendes maybe... I think that he didn't cast any, because I think... But do they come we back? Only... They don't come back day after day, right? Like, he's just stuck at whatever he's at forever once he uses it, right? I don't think so. I mean, spell slots because... don't come back. 
But it's not a spell slot. It's not. But it is a um, spell. Yeah, you know, it's just the effects of the spell that say they reset with the day. It's not like anything that the character is doing to reset. Yeah, it it so it's it's possible because it says if you cast the spell two or more times before finishing your next long rest, mm -hmm. and technically, the the simulacrum doesn't can't rest gain benefits <laughs> from a long rest because yeah. it doesn't regain health, doesn't regain spell slots, all the other fun things. Yeah, but there's nothing to say that they can't long rest. Technically, it's just useless. Mm -hmm. I so it's... I kind of imagine they function like like they're basically automatons, even though they're not strictly automatons. They were forged long rest. <laughs> That's why they're not strictly automatons. <laughs> this is the Terminator. It doesn't need sleep. It doesn't need food. It has no compassion. Well, you need to. Be, you have two. Like one of them is a warforged, and one of them is a plasmoid. So <sighs> you have the uh, the T one thousand, the T two thousand. I got what you were going. It's uh, the T eight hundred and the T one thousand. Okay. Um. Actually, Sam. Anyway, what are you going to do? Who wants to do something? You've got. Potentially the Sabbath to deal with, though, according to the commune, it's not going to be doing anything to you for at least two days. Um, well, that's not entirely... It's that it's not going to be in physical... Con it doesn't want to be in physical contact with him, mm -hmm. which odds are if it was planning to do something, that would be part of the plan. Mm -hmm. So we feel... I think it, that's relatively confident. Mm -hmm. Or no, oh, no, we know it's not planning to be... Within 100 miles. Near. Or did we hold on, actually look at the? We might have modified them both to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was physical contact for both of them. No. Cyrus, the answers that we have about the Aboleth, um, are those sufficient for the use of your ninth level spell to create a new simulacrum? Uh, so that there are two ninth level sendings yeah, so that we I can know. initiate our contact with the Empire of the Four Queens. I was going to say names, but I can't remember the names. <laughs> I think they're written down. Did I write them down? I thought I copied them into the chat. Maybe I didn't. Yes. The only follow up question is uh, Cassium and Ethel's spell, and I get to it, I'm probably going to. So, do we want an additional copy of anyone else? The Simulacrum Cyrus has been beneficial for the purposes of adding another dragon into the combat encounters. Right? No. Well, didn't. he's you not. Did. Well, he's no. not. The oh, no, he did. I'm yeah, the dragon. it was. Right. I was thinking because one of them popped, but that was you popping. Like a pinata. Uh, so he he wasn't he was helping me with magic stuff maybe. What was he doing? The um, simulacrum. Yeah. What did we have simulacrum Cyrus doing? Um, not much. You, the last time you had really made use of simulacrum Simi Cyrus uh, was when you needed to split the party. <laughs> right, because yeah, yeah. Getting back from... Was being a teleport fairy. Yeah. So he is missing a couple of his higher level spell slots, so I could make myself, like, make a new me, but I could also just make someone else instead. So my question is, does anyone want an extra them? Like, Vindar, do you want an extra you to just sit there crafting things? You know, I hadn't thought of that. <coughs> you know, where they would, I could command it and yeah, it would you getting interrupted at things. least. Yeah. <laughs> and I could be making twice as much. And now I don't need Jebel. Oh, I still use Jebel, then there'll be three of us. Make three <laughs> times as much. 
yeah, Kelly was just another you. <laughs> have to make enough simulacra of somebody to figure out where the point of diminishing returns is. <laughs> How many me's can there be? Too many simulacra. I mean, I wouldn't say no to that if you... Alright, uh, you might want to provide an extra set of clothes for it. Okay. I'll, I'll have it wear my noble's clothes. Uh, so then, yeah, uh, if you'll, you'll join me in the lab for a moment, Larry, and this we can uh, get this underway. I would prefer if we just did it in the courtyard. <laughs> Well, I imagine he's in the middle of something. If he's I'm not, in the then middle sure. Of mm. It'll take six seconds. Come on. Lermendus will follow. Just, I think. Is... It only smells really bad. It's okay. <laughs> um, is Sima Lermendus in the middle of anything super important that we need to have him not just disappear in? Uh, we've kept him with us because he was assisting with the. Um, investigation work. Cool. Then I'll get you guys in the same room. I will dual cast uh, Wish uh, using some black room to make a fresh Laramendus, truly being the old one, and a new Vendar. So that will be on a ninth level slot and nine of my 22 sorcery points. Lermanence, since I also don't know what spell slots you currently have available, you know, need you to keep track of what what all it has uh, left. Yeah, I'm, I am writing that all down now. Vindar, I don't think you have anything to keep track of, but if you do have daily resources, uh, you're going to need to keep track of what you have left. This does not duplicate your equipment, only your knowledge and abilities. I do have lucky points. <laughs> okay. Well, then however many you have now is how many it has, and it cannot get any back. Okay. Uh, I will... make sure they both have the appropriate user list of... myself first, because that's a requirement of the spell, party, and then Thandros. Uh... If either of you want, I can uh, put yourselves like a, you know, in the in between myself and party, since they are simulacrums of you. Uh, I think that's reasonable. Um, all right, then I will do that. So each person has so. They all answer to my commands, the person that they are a copy of, the parties, then Pandros. And if my records are accurate, uh, the semi Cyrus that's left still has most of his resources, but he's missing the top half, like top third of his spell slots, and a lot of sorcery points. <laughs> he would also be a copy of the me when I twin myself. Few resources like that, but they're all for combat, so I don't think they'll come up. Alright, I have placed a Simi Vendar and Simi Laramendus on the map. Anybody can tell them what to do. You guys can make them do anything! It's totally normal. Uh, I, I give it the clothes that the previous one had that were probably just at its feet. <laughs> That's accurate. Uh, Vendor, yours is naked. Uh, that's a good-looking dragonborn. 
picture of beauty. <laughs> oh my god. It is just I'll all hanging out, out right now. <laughs> I'll take out my noble clothes and get handed to <laughs> I'm trying to think if it's nicer just to, like, in recreating you as a Dragonborn, just have your noble clothes fit a Dragonborn, or be like, yeah, you know, you got human a, noble clothes, these are like... They were human noble clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's trying to get these damn things off, that, like, just tears out the bottom of the legs, they're like Hulk shorts now. <laughs> I mean, I feel like most things are fit, but any shoes you have, those are right out. <laughs> yeah. If they really don't fit, I'll ask the unseen servants if they can hem them. <laughs> I like the, uh, I the don't Hulk. know that there's because they don't need to hem. They need to let them out. Yeah, uh, whatever. They it can is. they can bring yeah, them bigger. him clothing that will bring... not exist outside of the mansion. <laughs> but as long as he doesn't leave the mansion, he can be comfortably clothed. Uh, oh, and Vendar, if you ever get tired of him, uh, stab him. Well, I... He has half your HP. I didn't stab myself. That's, uh, I already killed myself once. <laughs> and you're practiced on it then. Good. Um, uh, Sam, just a just an accounting of this, since it's a new simulacrum. Uh, your spell slots for today were entirely unspent, or had you used any? Uh, I used a lot of my high-level ones. Um, not ninth, but other high-level ones. So I'm I'm writing down the spell list as I currently have it, and how many of each uh, okay. level I have left. I'm gonna pin, or I'm gonna post that in the Snark channel, just right. so it's reported yeah, Just so we know. <laughs> what, and then you, yeah. you can just take things away as the uh, simulacrum yeah. uses them. That seems a good way to do it. Uh, and if you're worried your simulacrum will get into uh, combat, I do have a spare focus it could attune to. You know, give it a little extra oomph. Um. I expect we'll be in combat. <laughs> Something's gonna attack the mansion. Can it attune items? Uh, it's not a creature. Is it? In constructs are creatures. It's a creature type. I suppose. What's the benefit it's gaining from this? What are you trying to attune? I was offering up the uh, the, the dragger, dragon slayer wand or whatever it is in case we want to have one of the two magically inclined simulacrums uh, more combat ready. I see. Uh, for now, I'll say okay. Just uh, move it along. If I come up with a reason that it shouldn't be okay later, I'll let you know. But yeah. Go ahead. Um, sure. Uh, that is fair enough. If mostly just so that it has a focus, if it needs to cast something that requires yeah. a focus. A caster. So how does that work? Uh, I think he was talking, saying for Simular Mendes. Um, so, in, casters aren't required to attune anything to cast, they just have to have a focus on them. Um, so, like, whatever Laramenda's focus is, if he had a focus of that type, he could use it. He wouldn't need, he's trying to get him to attune right. this magical focus, which empowers spells. I think I misunderstood. I thought he was offering that to my simulacrum. No, I was oh. offering it to either of the... Either Simulator Minister or Simulator Cyrus, because they cast spells and thus can use it. Uh, Simulator Cyrus is dead. Yeah, Simulator Cyrus is gone. Oh, I didn't yeah, know he died. Just... Well, he yeah, died yeah, when, you... when you cast Simulacrum uh, again. Uh, you can only have the results yeah, of one casting of Simulacrum at a time. Gotcha. 
uh, you would know the effect of that spell. Would you have preferred there to be a simulacrum, Cyrus? I it mean... was okay if he didn't. Yeah, the current version of... Like, he wasn't giving as much use as I think Fendar's copy will. Because he is constantly trying to get things done. I'm a busy boy. Well, Snake and Fendar is funny. Right, <laughs> right, right. I was thinking of the yeah, I would have had to have had the duplicate cast it to start things getting funky, but didn't have to spell slot and things. <laughs> but then, follow-up question. I'm going to assume, since I now know how the spell works, that I brought uh, Sinu Cyrus here to be decommissioned. So just, 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 just poof in front of the army like you keep doing. <laughs> so as to at least uh, reclaim uh, any clothing or equipment that I would have lent him. I would have loved for Ruby to be like, Who, whose clothing is Did somebody get raptured? What's happening? <laughs> Ruby's just like, wait, no. Laramendus told me to tell him if <laughs> somebody disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Your little halfling friend who keeps disappearing disappeared. I didn't know if that was news or not. Here's his clothes. I was about to do that point. in front. <laughs> I'll give me back my normal spellcast and focus at least. So... Simulacrum if... Cyrus have your sword? No, he didn't have the sword. He had the, the normal focus. Oh, not, okay. not, not the, like, attuned ones. There you go. Yeah. So, even if we end up realizing that Simulacrum just can't uh, use the wand, like, at least give him my normal focus so that you both have one. Uh, let's just say we do that because it'll be easier than me trying to remember it having enough different bonuses. Because, like, right now I can just unattune my items to see what his bonuses are. Um, but trying okay. to keep in mind weird things for attunement uh, is going to slip my mind, so let's just say we give him the regular uh, non-magical focus. Good enough. Oh, wait. just realized Simi Vendor doesn't have my hat. <coughs> He's not as pretty as me. <laughs> I mean, it's just got it just there's something about him, you know. It's just he doesn't like fill the room in the same way. Uh, it's those dead eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I can swap out my ring for my other focus, just dual wield focus eye for some reason. That way, Sinu Vendar can also have his own hat. In quotes. <laughs> You're not you still it. like looking into a mirror, Vendor. So you're like, wait, I thought I was better than this. <laughs> and then I look into an actual mirror. It's like, oh, <laughs> am I, I am. really that? Well, what's wrong? <laughs> you just the like a, eyes. straighten your shoulders. Come on, stand up. Nope. This hat never leaves my head. I wear it during sex. <laughs> <laughs> he has to, otherwise he starts performing poorly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't well, do it. Well. Like his constitution. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> I think there's some charisma involved. Yeah. Yeah, I got a reputation to uphold. <clears throat> <laughs> the hat stays on during sex. <laughs> the fire's like, uh, yeah, mine too. Anyway, you have a new friend. Have fun with him. I'm looking forward to it. Simi Vendor wants to pet the ferret. He doesn't have one. It's okay. Squeakers, play with both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdest scene of two very large dragonborn who look identical, just wearing different clothing, playing with this ferret on the ground in this little... Glade, I guess. We can go to garden. <laughs> Lots of work is getting done today. Um, but, yes, yeah, so, you've got a couple things, party, that you want to do. You know, uh, you want to uh, deal with coffers, deal with the army of the Four Queens, deal with the Aboleth all before this uh, big final battle commences, and you guys are the ones setting the pace. Like, I'm not... 
when things make sense, I push a thing at you, but otherwise, it's like, you guys gotta tell me, when is this all gonna happen? What are you gonna do? <laughs> so I have like, a question. Mm -hmm. how, my, how many small grenades can I make with the small I have? Yeah, quite a bit of small. Like, it it kind of depends on like how big a effect you're trying to create, but so like which effect are you thinking of? Well, I mean, I want a bunch of different effects. Okay. But like, uh, I want some healing ones, just like healing potion ones. Okay, so if you wanted to turn them all into like that fireball sized area one, turn all of the small into uh, grenades that I did that AOE, but of whatever effect you mix with it. You probably have enough small to make... 20? Twenty-five? I was kind of hoping that I could have some... I could make some powerful ones to use for us, and then make a smaller... Uh, ones to disperse among the army. Okay. Um, like, what... Say, the one that you used had, like, a 20-foot radius. What What are you looking for? A 10-foot radius? A 5-foot radius? Remember, the 5-foot radius Ten... is a 3x3. Three three. Yeah, a 10-foot radius would probably be good, especially for the ones for the... the army. Mm -hmm. Can maybe do 5-foot radius for the party ones, because as a party I'll be able to communicate with them and say I get, get into this and I get together and I can fuck you. Okay, so that the 5 foot radius ones would require less small. I don't know... So do you want to give... Are you just gonna not do 20 foot radius ones and just do 10 and 5? How many could I make if I say have five five foot ones and the rest ten feet? And the rest are ten? Uh okay. I'd say that it would have been fifty. And then uh forty-eight ten foot radius ones and five five foot radius ones. Okay. I can work with that. Just saying that it's a linear progression for simplicity. Uh, so what, what does that mean each... That if you okay. had enough small to make about 25 20 foot radius ones, if you reduce them all to 10, then okay. you can make about 50 of them. And if you reduce that to 5 foot radius, then you're going to be able to make about 100 of them. Okay. But, you know, with less skilled people and people who are fighting in the army where there's more people they want to hit, bigger AoEs are probably better. Yeah. So, determine if you want to use 10 foot or 20 foot or maybe cut your resources down even further to make yeah. them bigger than that. Yeah. <clears throat> Might want to see if I can get a hold of my contact and get any more small. <laughs> but for now, uh... I think I'll make mostly 10 feet for now. Okay. I guess I'll make a few 10 feet first, and then I'll test them out in the army and see how well I can, how, like, how, many, how good a group I can get, okay. how, how many can move through and stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, so like at maximum, that's 25 people, right? Because it's a 5x5 five five square. Mm hmm. And how long does the effect last? Um. um I mean, say, how long can they move, move into the cloud and get the effect, is what I mean. Yeah, um, I think that rather than trying to figure out windiness and shit like that, I'll just say it lasts two turns. Okay. Pretty quick. Yeah, which is useful and somewhat not useful in certain ways. Full on the fact that that means the enemies aren't going to be able to 
or it's less likely they'll be able to swoop in and get the effects. Mm -hmm. Especially since they won't know, at least at first, what the bombs are doing. Okay, I'll think about it like that. That's, that's thing thing. Okay. So, what is happening, party? I have just posted in Snark um, my proposal for sendings. Uh, I think Lara Mendes's intent would be to send to uh, Philomena Barafas and Orlissa Frangella. I don't remember how you pronounced it. <laughs> I remember Frangela. I know that's what that, that's I, I I know that's what you want us to say, but I remember you pronounced it differently the first time and said even though Riken is gonna say it's Frangela. <laughs> Frangela. Okay, Frangela. Uh, I picked the first two alphabetically by last name. Um, that seemed a reasonable way to pick two of the three that we could send to. Hmm. Um. Picking favorites. Uh, so, for the purposes of a stream and anyone not wanting to open up the channel, uh, new champion Bah of Bahamut behested Laramendus, establishing contact with our allies in Empire Four Queens, wish to set up in-person meeting. We can travel to you with permission. Also informing General insert the other person who is not receiving that particular sending. Mm. Uh, they will be aware that they do not know me. Yeah. And that this sending is 35 words. Yeah. Which is a ninth level spell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they will be aware, unless we pick a different name for the simulacrum that this is one person using two ninth level spells mm -hmm. <laughs> which is weird <laughs> it's a, it's certainly a flex <laughs> <laughs> this I received a ninth level sending from this person I also received a ninth level sending from that person what <laughs> <laughs> The horror. <laughs> I at least um, want to know how. That is true. They will be. They will likely be curious about exactly the manner in which we were able to accomplish that, um, as well as how we would intend to travel to them. Um, since most people do not travel at the speed that we do. What? Or we are you saying no one else has access to teleportation? What? Pretty rare thing. Teleportation itself is rare. Uh, the more precise teleporting involving uh, other planes of existence and plane shift is probably less common than teleport. Despite the lower level spells, you just need more of them. Well, you need access to another plane of existence. Yeah, but if you have plane shift, you can get to one, and then you come back. It is true. Somebody with two seven level spells could. Sixth. Plane shift is six. Yep, that's that's why I was pointing it out because teleport seven. It's weird. No, plane shift is seven. Really? Yeah. Checked that like just that last night. Hmm. Must have. I don't know. Reading a lot of things lately. My wires must have yeah. crossed. Ignore me. So, 
if this is my proposal, uh, and my proposal is that we perform these sendings sooner rather than later, uh, although our... No, Leah could plane shift us from the mansion. Uh, which should be sufficient to be able to get us there today if they would like to meet at some point today, presumably when the army has stopped marching. See, I know whatever it is they're doing. Um... Uh, we didn't actually, we didn't perform the sendings yet. Oh. I have to, like, cut it. <laughs> uh, if nobody else, if nobody is, has a different thing about <clears throat> these sendings, then uh, I, I think that we should perform the two of them now. And I think that's good. You've always been good at being professional. Sometimes too professional, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Gate plan Delta. <laughs> um, all right. Then, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I suppose Laramendis would send to the General Barifas and. The simulacrum would send to General Frangelo, just because first and second names, but Mario Laramendis is going to need to send to the third one, <laughs> which will be his ninth level spell tomorrow, so thankfully he doesn't get milked frequently. <laughs> we'll make another, another simulacrum. It's okay, I, I got plenty of purple worm poison for now. <laughs> cool. Um, well, that's my ninth level spell, and also my seventh level and eighth level spells. <laughs> well, our response is interesting because uh, we could say we got the names from Tatsia because the coffers will think that that's the only way because he thinks that he, he disrupted us. So maybe we can trick him into thinking that Tatsia is still around and. I, didn't us. we tell him exactly what happened? Oh wait, didn't we? Didn't we? You gave him the whole story. Ah, never mind then. He if, knows if they, more about what you did than than Thandros does. If he if he tries, we shouldn't have told him this shit. Uh, God, we're dumb. I do <laughs> wish, out of character, <laughs> I wish that I could see Kavros's face <laughs> when the generals are contacted by us the day after he disappeared. <laughs> of course, we can use that to discredit coffers at the very least, because they don't know. All they have is, is coffer, whatever coffers has told them. So if he tries, if he's trying to say that we killed Tatsia, we can say, well, how would we have your names? We, we got them from Tatsia. And Joel's like, why is there an echo in this sending? Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds Am I a speakerphone? in a weird way. <laughs> Am I on speakerphone? Yes. <laughs> the simulacrum opens its mouth and the sending is just communicated nah. that way. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a tin can. <laughs> Some poor, like, adjutant is going to be told to find out what they can about a wizard Laramendus. <laughs> he was living in some fishing village a few months ago, now he's suddenly like a demigod. I get, like, some old crepid dude out of the back, happens to be one of your students. <laughs> <laughs> God, he was dull.
So until we're able to send to uh, third general's name as I scroll farther than I thought I did, uh, Adaris Sandrini. <laughs> um, Laura Mendes doesn't have anything for his speed. I don't think I have anything newly pressing after our uh, investigation of the documents being completed. Um. <sighs> oh. Who would be in the... Did I give the the wall of force ring to somebody? What? Yeah. I don't know that you gave it to somebody. You did ex You did state that you felt that it okay. might be better with someone else, though. Yeah. Um, who who thinks that they would most strongly benefit from the Ring of Sequelling? Um, would you, would you like to fill in the person who was likely poofed while this happened? Were you poofed? Mm. I have no... Uh, recollection of it out of character. He was a least. dragon when it came up. It was when you were yeah, fighting the uh, I was Tritons. Doing the fight with them. Yeah. It was right after the fight with the Tritons that I was talking about it. So I used, I think I used it during the fight, but I um. I don't know that you ever that used it. You used yeah, the, no, I didn't use that one. Staff of one. Sea Calling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know the staff got used. That one I remember. This no clue. But he explained the other two items after the fact. They need to be um, attuned, right? No. No, oh, the don't? boots do. I think the staff and the ring don't. The boots do. Yeah. That's cool. um. Why don't I the boots? Oh, maybe because I didn't. Of, I didn't you didn't put the boots on. So I, yeah. Oh, right, I grabbed the other two as I booked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you had very specifically um, said, I grabbed these two, I'm not taking the boots because I need to attune them anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the ring, uh, ten charges. Each charge uh, creates a ten by ten square of wall of force. Um, these charges don't need to be used to create contiguous larger squares per the Wall of Force spell. They're, they can be uh, created individually, um, but each of these squares is 10 by 10. Uh, the ring does not require, require attunement. I think that because I can cast Wall of Force and Force Cage... Um, on my own, it is better for somebody else to <clears throat> be in possession of it. I feel like your guys' tokens not being here is making you feel like you're not present, but you are. And contribute. Does anyone feel like they could most strongly benefit from Wall of Horse's ability to control a battlefield? It takes an action to use, right? Yeah. Uh, all, I believe so. All of the uh, items are an action to use. Oh no, it's a 30 by 30. Yeah, it's much better than uh, normal okay. Wall of Horse. Yeah. Oh, normal Wall of Horse is 10 by 10. I thought normal Wall of Horse was 5 by 5. No, it's 10 by 10. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this makes each charge that you expend, and there isn't a limit on charges that you can expend in a single turn, um, but each charge that you expend creates a 30 by 30 uh, panel that is always <coughs> planar. Uh, but if you spend more charges, you create more 30 by 30 panels, and you can place them however you want. They do not need to be contiguous like a actual Wall of Force spell does. All right. But they can be oh. contiguous. How long do they last? And do they require concentration? 
No. Uh, I don't think Wall of Force Wall of Force created by the ring last a number of hours after casting equal to the Warrior's proficiency bonus or until they are destroyed per the Wall of Force spell with the Disintegrate spell. Yeah. Okay. I've been really I mean, getting into that uh, proficiency bonus thing. It's nice. I... I could definitely make some use of it, and also, like, insulate allies from, uh, my ever-increasing size of AoEs that I drop. <laughs> so as to have a wall between, uh, them and the effect. Turn the Ring of Sea Quelling into the Ring of Dragon Break. <laughs> Terrible. But I think it makes a lot of sense since, like, any untrained person is going to have a proficiency bonus of one or two, uh, since two is a level one character. Um, and that means that they'll be able to stop big tidal waves from wiping out the island. Two yeah. hours is probably enough time to be to wait out a storm. Yeah, two hours of a very strategically placed set of wave breaks. Yeah. I think that'll protect them from most storms. Yeah. Which was the idea behind it. Yeah. Does anyone else have any ideas for the ring? My only concern with you having it, Cyrus, would be your um, condition. Yep, that, that's fair. I'm certainly not going to just claim it to claim it. I'm just putting out there what I'd use it for. How many charges does it have? Ten. It has ten charges. <laughs> uh, can it regain those charges in any way? Uh, yes, at Sunrise. Neat. Uh, DA Any plus chance two. that it breaks? No. Because oh, good. the DM is kind, and that is always the dumbest effect on any magic items. Yeah, I remember it's I miserable. It makes you not want to use it. I gotta use it like twice, and it broke. Wait. I thought, well, maybe I'll take it. Can I stop a dragon's breast? Uh, you have a wall of force they breathe will... it stop most things. Can you well, use that as a reaction? No. Mm, oh, well, you could yeah. box a dragon in with five charges. Put all well, around. I was thinking if I could use it quick enough to where it would be all five breaths are coming at me, I could stop one of them. Um, Ideally, all can... five breaths won't be coming at you at once. You can certainly use it to um, just have created a wall that you use to protect a flank to reduce the risk of... Um, you could certainly make one of you like, choose to fight around so that you'll know where it's at, but they won't. I was trying to think of strategic ways I can use it if it's worth me taking it or not. I should turn up my dice, are still in my bag. I think Raikin would be all over that. Raikin? You can create yourself an invisible arena, so if you got any fucker that's trying to get away... <laughs> one on one battle! Yeah, it's like, you can't like, create, one I create one. a wall. Uh, it's one you wall I create. just yourself and Bala in the one little room. Come fight me, Bala. Now, with, um... And with four charges expent at once, you can wall somebody in... 
that isn't capable of jumping 30 feet or flying, mm -hmm. with five, you can make a box. Long cage match. <laughs> they could dig under it, I suppose. So with six, you could prevent that. <laughs> He's like, I got you for three minutes. He kills them in, in you know, like six turns. He goes, okay. Now, unless somebody has disintegrates, I'm stuck in here for, for the next six, six hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> the door in here. Four. The door in the back house. Yeah, uh, another. <laughs> I think you this can. Can you misty step through it? I, I shadow step through it. <laughs> I've got you for three minutes. Freaking <laughs> smites them in one shot. All right. <laughs> Uh, Who's got to do it in these three minutes? Yeah. This may not okay, have been the best, here. Uh, the best idea of my time. <laughs> uh, you hit him so hard, the entire the entire box is just coated in blood. It just explodes. <laughs> I blood. can't see. Is the battle going well? I can't get out. Can teleport out. <laughs> uh, I, it, Trying to wipe the blood away. My understanding of Wall of Force is that it extends into the ethereal, so something that's traveling in the ethereal plane is stopped by Wall of Force, but you it does not prevent teleportation of any kind. Yeah, yeah. Um, force Cage can, but Force Cage is a 7th level spell as opposed to the 5th. Mm. Um, but yeah, with, with Wall of Force, it prevents any projectiles from going through it, but like any magic that originates outside of, like, like not from you... Um, or any magic that, you know, like, is a thing that you can see, or anything like that, then, um, is fine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you could theoretically use it to wall someone in, annihilate them, teleport out, and <laughs> just have a box on the battlefield for six hours. <laughs> a very large coffin. <laughs> Do I have to attune this ring? No. Of course, you can no. set it so... Oh, like if it's big enough, you could set it so there's just like a three, three or four foot gap in one of the walls. The dragon yes. wouldn't be able to fit through it. And but now I'm just imagining a penalty box or something on the middle of the field that you're like dimension door. People who need to rest inside it because nothing can <laughs> get at them. <laughs> well, <clears throat> what you go inside the cage. Um. Oh, but. What you, spells would be, were what you would do great. within it you have a globe of invulnerability and that's where all of the people rest mm. because you have somebody in there casting spells the globe of invulnerability is small enough mm -hmm. that somebody could teleport next to it mm -hmm. to get in mm -hmm. so like it there is that concern but then you have even more protection because somebody wouldn't be able to just like cast a spell that's going to affect anyone <coughs> in there. Mm -hmm. And nobody could counter anything that happens in it because counter spell is a third level spell, which means it cannot affect anything that is done from within a global of invulnerability. Right, so these, which is beautiful. these are even only at half even the ninth level walls. spell magic. Or, uh, a ninth level um, counter spell. Couldn't do it. Uh, what Harsh. was that, Riken? How big are these walls? 30 by 30. One charge per wall. No one limit on charges spent in a single action. That makes Riken a little sad. I, I don't think that's going to be enough to uh, create a, the, the, the boxy barrier for him and Bala. <laughs> well... It well, we'll be. also like be able to teleport out of it regardless. Oh, uh, right. The dragons can teleport. Dragons got if I can do it, dragons can if, do it. If, if, if Bala's gonna teleport away, then that just means she's a bitch. <laughs> um, yes. I, I think we've covered that, actually. Generally, throw the entire island in poison full of non-combatants. Put she in that category. No, I mean, like, the coward type of bitch. Yes, same thing. But yes, it would not be a, a 
box made of wall of force is not a sufficient deterrent to any sufficiently powerful spellcaster. Well, you always kill the casters first. Luckily, um, all the dragons are casters, so good luck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, strategy <laughs> doesn't really work for dragons. <clears throat> Got a lot of health and shit. I mean, sufficiently, <laughs> I normally... and, and sufficiently prepared. Like, it, not all dragons are going to have teleportation magic prepared. Not all dragons are going to have disintegrate. I mean, I think I'm all right. The the whole entire battle is my own. The Abolithin. Piss it off even more. So, so at in another box. present, I believe the one who has the strongest desire for it is Cyrus. Since Riken does not want it, Yukikaze seemed to think it wouldn't be useful in the ways that he wanted it to be useful and so didn't want it. Yeah, I I don't think I can utilize its boots like maximum, like other than imprisoning someone that we're tra we're tracking, which most of us will be together. I don't know of a major absolute need for me, you know. I mean, it's a useful th if there is a line of engagement with infantry casting it above them to protect them from projectiles from kobolds or dragon breath essentially in the same way that cyrus was saying that he wanted to do um is not an unhelpful use of it oh it becomes oh, less yeah, beneficial yeah. if someone um if the line does move enough but uh strategically placed at opportune moments could give people the moment that they need to be able to make progress. That is a fair point, and I will usually always be on the front lines. Now, the biggest issue is that you only get the one action usually, so... Well, I also... But if you get, like, haste or something, then you could use that answer. With it. I also can push myself a bit a couple of times. True, because you are the fighter. And being able to action surge when it's very useful. Um, it could also be used to uh, help protect a flank that's about to collapse uh, if there's anything pushing in on it there. Um, it could be used to isolate some portion of uh, uh, yeah, if, if I suppose, again, if you're dealing with infantry, putting it two lines behind the front so that reinforcements can't help, or if they do, it becomes a scramble uh, a bit behind enemy lines. Um, so I don't okay. know how reasonable that is for what you're going to be engaging in, uh, but the above to protect from Dragon's Breath is a very useful thing. So, other than Laramendus and I think those devil those or no, um, Bender was speaking. Does anyone else feel that it would be useful for me? It would be fine with me taking it. Yeah, you can make good use of it. Thank you. Yeah, I think you and Cyrus are the best choices for it. With Cyrus disappearing, I think that makes you the best one. Okay. All right, then uh, I will be happy to accept it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, especially with the action um, surge. You know, yeah. between action surge and freaking spell, either of us can make very good use of it. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for half a day. We are all powerful. Forget what everybody else has. Um, it is in D&D &D Beyond. Uh, you can say like, it's the Ring of Sea Quelling. Okay. I need to put the add items first. Oh, no. I cannot fail with EC15 religion check. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not supposed to be super hard, but like anybody who's 
you know, casually involved in religion. And we're like, yeah, that's a thing. That is indeed a thing. 15 is my minimum. I have a plus 14 to religion. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I got it. Thank you. Cool. Uh, yes, Jebel, this is one of the items from the Mage's Guild. Did we get a list of those? I think so. Um, I don't... I mean, I I have the list. Um, there's the Staff of Sea Calling, which people saw me use. It's probably not particularly beneficial in the... Um, Fight to come. Oh, it was like what, anywhere. Sea Strider's there. boots or something like that. Yeah, I don't. I don't have them on my inventory. <coughs> Damn it! <gasps> Excuse me. Seafarer's boots. What? Seafarer? That might be. Yeah. Yes, Seafarer's boots. Like, it is like me to use the word seafarer. I use that word when I play Catan. Okay, beat me to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, people saw me use the staff. Um, I don't know if anyone has a particular desire for it. I don't think it will see much use in the coming fight given our means of transit and uh, what things are, but if we are fighting at the harbor, then something might happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't require attunement, so it's like, you have it yeah. in case it's useful, should, and if it's not, yeah, big we should, we should bring it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If anyone wants it, instead of Laramendus He's perfectly happy to give it to somebody. Jebel doesn't like it. I don't need it. What are we discussing? The staff? Of sea uh, calling. Okay, then. then yeah, that's... that's Riken is not interested in that. You don't want to be Aquaman? No. Wow. Such disdain but for everything I like. I didn't know. I was I was busy uh, trying to uh, get rid of a message in chat. And, and then um, get rid of. Does anyone have an attunement slot that they are not utilizing anything for? No, yeah. I, I am quite the opposite. I, I have one more item that needs attunement than I can attune. <sighs> and uh, you. You saw that you received the two sendings back there, Sam? Yes. Okay. I'm, so, I'm sad about uh, Frangela's. I mean, like, we we don't want to just appear from nothing. We want to give them a heads up. Well, maybe if you said her name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, if somebody has an attunement spot, uh, the Seafarer's Boots are very useful items since we will be near a harbor. <laughs> you know, um, just in case somebody, like, is dropped into um, it. It gives you, um, water walking. Unfortunately, my treasures from Bahamut are very demanding on spot of tomb and slots. Yeah. <laughs> I were to guess the only probably doesn't have full stuff is either Jebel or Vindar. Because I know I do, you do, Vindar, or not Vindar, uh, uh, Ikaze and Riken all do. So I don't know about Leo. Is Riken using I all am... of his attunements? Yeah. I've tried to offer him things on several occasions, so I don't think the <clears throat> I never remember who's got what. I have the I armor am. of Kord, the belt of Reich and strength, and the ring of heavy strike. 
Oh, okay. I forgot the ring required attunement. Yeah, I have armor, staff, and the um, pendant. Right. The seal pendant. Yeah. yeah. We haven't seen her in a while. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, is it, does Leah use all of her attunement slots? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, l let me double check, but I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, because that's why you got the... Uh, the headband thing, the circlet. Because oh, yeah. I couldn't attune anymore. Uh... Had nothing to do with you, you know, benefiting from being smart. No, that was just a bonus. <laughs> she wanted to hold on to it. <laughs> just that she, had, she got better items that would work better for her. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, let's see, put, put the merchant's shield, uh, dragon slayer focus, and armor of the pack. Yeah, three things. So okay, she attunes all slots. Tell me yeah, that a group of level twenties is tricked out. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking, so, you know. Huh. So I, I still don't know about Vendar. Full. I, got, I, I became full when I got my worker's boots. Mm, right. <laughs> then, yeah. And while they have everything occupied. Look cool, I think the extra speed for my work. So, the only yeah, other I thing. I like being could... able to run stupid fast. So, the only other thing we could do is outfit uh, some elacrums that we need to take with us for the final fight. Assuming that works, which we don't know. Well, I guess there's only one way to test that. We can give them the boots, wait an hour or whatever, and then see if they can walk on water. We can also ask Thandros if he would like them. What? We got any extra gear we should pop <clears> into <throat> the other? And if for some skin, reason you wish to increase your right. casting, uh, Riken or one of your other items, let me know. If for some reason you would like to have better spellcasting of some variety over one of your other items, let me know. Uh, I see. Uh, no, I I believe uh, these three will suit me best, but I appreciate the offer. He gives you the belt of Riken strength. I will definitely not give up the belt of Riken strength. <laughs> That's why... That is like right next to the armor of Korn as being the the two items that will help me <laughs> against Bala. <laughs> yeah, I was I was certain if you're going to give up anything, it would be the the ring of heavy punching, which that is the only name I'm going to refer to it by. Is <laughs> yeah, that would be the only one. But I mean, man, that that extra freaking six damage is just great. <laughs> Yeah, six damage to melee attacks. Yeah, when I hit for at least 13 damage before smite every single attack, I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it'll be a much more impressive ring if it makes an appearance in a lower level campaign <laughs> where you get to level up a little. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my god. I was doing plus eight, now I'm doing plus nine. Plus ten. <laughs> So much damage. All the damages. And it got stronger. Just like me. It means I got more stronger. Just like me. Okay. So, do we somewhat have these item preparations figured out now? Uh, I believe so. Um,. I'll hold on to the staff. Uh, Yuki Kaze has the ring, and for the next person to speak with Andros can ask if he would like them. Um, it should be made clear to everyone that has one of these items that these items do belong to the Mages Guild, and we should return them when the fighting is done. 
will. Possibly. Might. You don't have one of them, Riken. <laughs> I mean, I don't. That's that's why I, I don't have to. I might possibly, if, you know, whoever has them might die, and I end up having to grab it for them. I don't know. Laramidas, did the generals get back to you? <laughs> uh, Laramidas had conveyed the two sendings that are posted oh. in uh, Snark. I'd say uh, we just show up. I think that we should not do that. <laughs> Pick what? two generals to send to. One warns me not to show up or we might get killed. The other one challenges me to show up. Yeah, I mean, I'm taking the challenge. I mean, my brother did it, so I can't let my brother show me up. <laughs> well, good luck getting there. Teleport. I don't know where they are. You disappoint me, Lair Mendes. Remember when you defended him and his intelligence? <laughs> no. When, when did I defend his intelligence? When I told uh, Brandon to play Scrabble with him instead of me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I get from Tatsia's assault on him. Uh... You know, yesterday. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. There's so much stuff that happens in these days. I mean, this one was when he was still talking in your head. I know, but there's still so much that happens <laughs> in, in these days. Well, you guys managed to fit a lot in. So what's our next plan of action, then? We cannot contact General starts with an S. Sendry until tomorrow. Okay. Uh, even if I were, even if any of us were slightly more familiar with them, I do not have anything like a sufficiently high level spell slot to reach out. And that should, that is all all the generals, right? That will be the third one to reach out to, yes. Okay. Because I know the one said he won't talk to us unless we talk to all of them. And the other one's just like, prove your worth. <laughs> so, okay. I will gladly prove my worth. <laughs> we know you will. <laughs> it is useful to get a sense for the personalities of our hopeful allies. Yeah. But until I can regain my more powerful magics, uh, I think that the most useful thing for me to do would be to see how I can assist in magical training that the Tritons are conducting. Mm -hmm. Unless anyone has another use of my time, or the voice in the sky thinks that I, the player, am forgetting something. I don't think you're forgetting something. I'm trying to figure out if there's anything specific that people want to do, or if we're going to say, my character does this for the rest of the day, and we skip to another long rest. Nope. The only thing Riken will do is also train with the troops, but also do his flying training with uh, Kubriel. Mm -hmm. I will be Spear um, Dragon for the rest of the day. Tonight, we should make sure that we speak to Seltharis about um, our desire for her presence at our meeting with the generals when that occurs. Vendar and Simi Vendar, I can kind of continue making potions and stuff. Okay. Jevil? I was thinking about the message from the generals. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, well, I've, I've just caught up on like the 
contact final general Tatsia has their name. Sweet. But apparently we have the name as well. We do have the uh, name. Good, good, good. That was what um, Jebel had been helping uh, Laramendus with for four hours this uh-huh, morning. Uh-huh. And, the, the, and then the other one, Grangela. <laughs> Why not just appear before her? She just... She, Seems like uh, that kind of um, <clears throat> um, what's the word? We could find out where they are, and then go there. Now it would be difficult to pinpoint where exactly they are, but it would be possible. Um, I think, given the other general's demeanor. Uh, it might make sense to exercise a little bit more caution. See, which... No, but I mean her in particular. Or him. To appear before <clears throat> them, we would be teleporting. Which we could possibly do. It would take time to figure out. Um, but that would be spitting in the face of General Barafas. Hmm. Without knowledge of General Sindrini's personality, uh, I think it unwise to do that, especially when <clears throat> when we have made contact with the third general, we can make our way there via our sufficiently powerful magics which should prove things to General Frangela Frangela <laughs> I was gonna slip up at one point I, I want to say that it's probably safe to say also that at the time frame before we contact this last one they're probably gonna reach out to each other I do expect them to talk to each other about these sendings, which is one of the reasons why part of the sending was to inform them that we are, that we have sent to the other one so that they can begin to confer. What was the word I was looking for? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, what's the word when you do something impressive? Um... And it almost as a display of dominance. Intimidate. Um, show of force. Uh, grandiose. No. no, the word that's popping into my head Cow? is stretch. But that's not it. <laughs> like uh, like teleporting in front of Francella. Oh, a flex? Flex. Yeah. Flex. <laughs> <laughs> flex on me with your power weight that takes more words flexing in, flexing in such a way um, no. without knowing the personality of General Sandrini seems dangerous to me we're not gonna no, appear... just... oh sorry no, no I just like the idea of just, like, impress me with your power and then you're just suddenly in, right in front of her I don't <laughs> impress me with your power gate well and it's just like, <laughs> color me impressed. I have a bit more Out of character, we're not going to appear in front of him in like a Power Ranger Ginyu Force arrangement. <laughs> I mean, no, no we are not. not. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Riken's like, I wonder if she's a Cord follower. Do the <laughs> do other people feel it is? more in our interest to begin hunting down our potential allies so that we could go there without them telling us where they are as a display of uh, force 
or no I'm, I'm completely against going now we need to contact the last one I agree I think I think that would just <clears throat> set us off on a, on a bad foot I think uh, Sinu Vendar looks at Vendar and says are you thinking what I'm thinking with a smirk <laughs> Since you two are further, or you two are way doing your stuff. <laughs> You're just talking over the bomb. <clears throat> That's fine. I thought about if we need to make it look like Tatsu is still around. I am a dragonborn now, and I am very proficient in disguise kits, and I've never gotten the ability to use it. Especially I, with Simi Vendar. I think uh, that it is not prudent to tell a different lie to the Empire of the Four Queens. Depends on what Koffer said. Oh, we would need to know that beforehand if we wanted to. And I, I'll i agree with Lara Mendes on this. I don't think we need to go in there and be like, hi, here's Tatsia, and then later be like, by the way, that's not Tatsia. <laughs> <laughs> I, fooled you. <laughs> I mean, if we did stunt do that, then we would never be like. By the way, that wasn't Tatsuya. We'd be like, like if they if they're like the man and the Tatsuya be there, then I can try to pretend to be him and be like, hey, he is actually off doing this. And we are in charge, and then he leaves. Again. They're supposed to be our allies, though. That's true, but as we don't as, know as much as I offer us poison them. I, I just I, I don't see that going well when we're trying to yeah. conti- keep our alliance. I, I'm not I, saying it's the necessary thing. I'm saying if it turns out we need to do something like that, I'm capable. All right. Uh, Ryuki's trying to say something. Yuki. No, I was just gonna say that uh, if we also get caught in the lie at all, or even suspicion, we could bury our chance of working with them completely. <clears throat> I'd I mean, I'm only suggesting this at yeah, um, the point where we're already out, starting on a bad foot. Yeah, I got, I got what you're saying now with, with the last part you put in. It's like it, it is a option in a worst case scenario. Yeah. Now, like if coffers is already tried to poison their, their thoughts on us, well, then we can try to do that to convince them otherwise. I don't know how necessarily how the other generals seem to work, but Frangela seems to work as <laughs> shut up, I messed up, said, said the correct way. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Frangela oh, uh, seems to work more in a straightforward sense. So trying to slip one Honestly, past that, that would probably make her easier to see, but... But then if the truth comes out... Then... It, would make, it would make that worse, yes. The consequences would be worse if we got caught. It, it probably would help all the players and the audience, uh, whatever uh, listeners or future listeners are, if I read off their responses, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, much. I was trying to be counting words while you were discussing. I didn't want to interrupt. But yes, so you, Sarah Lermeta sent his sendings. Uh, General Barifus, uh sent back, Thou powerful Magus. Bahamut's new champion seeks an audience, requires approval by all generals present. Await approval before seeking our location, lest you find enemies, Lu allies. Recommend contacting final general Tatsia has their name. As opposed to Frangela, who wrote, Impress me with your power. Try to control me. The heart of the Empire will outlast this general. Seek our favors only when your face is known. Tatsia appeared forthright. Your words are yet hollow. When we meet her, don't call her Frangela. <laughs> no, that's her name! <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you call me? Ha 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 
<laughs> I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> just imagining we get done fighting the dragons, and dragon's just like, good job, Fragile. It's just like, for the goddamn hundredth time, this whole time that I've been talking to you, it's Frangella. Dragon's <laughs> like, oh, I don't think so. I feel, I feel like I would remember that. <laughs> That's a stupid name. <laughs> French French just sounds stupid. <laughs> All right. So we're going to wait until tomorrow. Yes. And contact the last channel, which I will agree with based off of... Uh, Barafoss's uh, reply. <coughs> yeah. Then I'm off to trade. Um, another thing that we do want to discuss sooner rather God than damn later. It. Um, the situation with the Lightning Slayer and how and when to inform. General Sturgis? Hmm. Sturgis Funny. Clevergill. Okay. Uh, I was on a sturgeon kick. <laughs> it's a good fish. Solid fish. <laughs> a lot of fish. <laughs> Terrible fish design. Spiky butt. <laughs> oh yeah, we still have to cook that. <laughs> Still need to bring it to Ruby. He, he's still just standing there with a giant sturgeon slung across his shoulders. <laughs> just in the, the pond. <laughs> just this massive yeah. fish swimming around in your pond. I guess how and when we want to inform General Clevergill of the reach of our abilities. Well, I mean, this is looking at Yuki Kaze when he says this. You just say reach? The reach. Oh. The extent. We don't have the ability to repeat the uh, Lightning Slayer's feats <clears throat> in the way that they likely expect them to be repeated. Oh. We can't I'm not looking forward to that conversation. <laughs> are, are you still confused, Yuki? No, I'm not okay. confused. I'm thinking. I, okay. I know exactly what's going okay. on. Okay, I just this. want to make sure, because, you know, this was a roundabout way of saying it based on the way it had been talked about before. No, it's just one of those things where you, 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 you're throwing us curveballs there, DM, and it's just like, so bitch, how are we going to deal with this? Um, <laughs> the game okay, is... Are you calling Laramendus circuitous and loquacious? I am calling you both Possibly of those things. Possibly even Sesquipedalian in his loquaciousness? <laughs> that particular statement was not very Sesquipedalian, but very often you are. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, are, we, are, are you talking English right now? <laughs> Technically, no! <laughs> but yes. I, I don't have... Just gonna pat Yuki Kaze on the shoulder and be like, Sorry, not all of us can be as good as Shaq as you I don't have a good answer for that at the moment, Larry. But... <laughs> uh, we should determine what that good answer is. The truth does often remove the weight of burdens from one's shoulders, Scholar. Well, it's also understanding, um... I... I feel like I hear... Uh, the name's escaping me. Ash? Ash. Yeah, he speaks See? out loud only. No, no, yeah, no, I know, but, like, for the, uh... Uh, I will speak out loud and can I can speak out loud and over the bottom at the same time. Right? Uh you 
you, you can, you, yeah. It, I, I, I think it's probably actually fine to do that. Like there, at first, I'm like it probably takes extra thought, and it's like, but it probably doesn't. Yeah, it just slows down telepathic communication. Yeah, you'd probably yeah. Bit, you, like, the rest of you, listen, like if you weren't hearing him physically, you'd think that he was talking very slowly on the bond. So I will say uh, we're also hearing it twice. I I, <laughs> I I I also am agreeing, Ash, in the sense or in honesty, and that's the path I want to take. But understanding our stance in the situation with the blue dragon and or in his blue dragon's brood. Um, uh, the names are escaping me at the moment and make sure we understand our stance with it and how and if we're going to deal with them I, I think being clear that we are we cannot possess the blue scale in time for this endeavor the um the reason for that being the acquisition of the green and red scales, so two to balance out the one. The <clears throat> fact that uh, it will be easier for others in the future to acquire the scale and seal the dragon because there will only be the one instead of our situation with four um, but our group is not in a position to pursue that end well let's also refresh our memories on our actual dialogue we had with the dragon and our stance with it because all we we did we I'm forgetting if we gave any extra condition for us handing over the scale, but it was just the scales we traded, right? We traded the blue scale for the red and green scale. Yeah, but we didn't. We didn't state that we wouldn't go after them, that we wouldn't uh, try to acquire it later. I forget if we stated anything else with that. There was sure a I consider plan. as our part of his brood it will be imprudent of us to uh, act so directly against his wishes wait say that last one again uh, if Azurai considers us part of his brood which yeah. discussions with others who are more knowledgeable about interacting with dragons seems to uh, make clear, then it will be imprudent of us to act so directly against his wishes. So it's more of, of underlying figuring out if we, if he, if he does consider us part of his brood. I, I think that we should be working under the assumption that everyone who knows more about dragons than we do is accurate in their belief that Azurai considers us part of his brood. Um, and what does that entail again? It means that we shouldn't directly cross him because he will be very upset. I think he'd be very upset if we sealed away dragons also. Or <laughs> sealed I mean, away. He, he doesn't care if we seal away Bala and Karasoth. He wants us to seal away Bala and Karasoth. Yeah. that is working towards his interests. So, in, in the sense, it's, it's it's crossing him before we deal with the others. Crossing him after wouldn't matter because we're going to be sealing him anyways. We won't seal... Azurai won't be sealed. Azurai could be killed. Oh, as, that's right. Azurai could be rude. What, what's the blue dragons? The, the Elzimuth. Elzimuth, that's right. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, there was... uh, yeah, I'm saying... Azurai's goal is to prevent Elsimenth's sealing. 
Most likely. That's I suppose it could be to control Elsimenth's ceiling, yeah. to hold blackmail over Elsimenth and have us seal him later if that blackmail doesn't come to fruition. But for the moment, he does not want Elsimenth sealed. If he did, he wouldn't have taken the blue scale from us because he would want Elsimenth sealed and we're a safer bet than most people to get that done. So, so. we can... So to the... To the trends, we can state the fact that at, at the current battle, we don't intend to go after the blue until after we, uh, so we go should after be clear here. that we can't go after Un Elsimenth until after we deal with the others. No, we should be careful about saying our that party, okay. our party cannot go after Elsimenth unless it is it becomes Azurai's desire to do so. We might be able to try Unless to we want to piss Azurai. off the dragon. Yeah. So we either decide right. that we're gonna fight Azurai too or are we But that's what I mean. If we do choose uh, and are going after him, we would have, we would be expecting to fight both those dragons. <laughs> Of course, we say that to people, and then Azrai finds out that we're planning on betraying him. He would be very angry. Well, okay, but that, but so I, I'm, I'm getting the understanding of how we feel with stuff. To think about how we want to present it, um, to to be honest with the tribes. Right. And if the Tritons hate them and or, or if the Tritons are also if it is such a if the lightning dragon is such um Azimuth is such a a bane to them, if we told them in private no one should find out about it anyways. Because they would want that to come to fruition. So I really don't want to interrupt because I do love the discussion that's going on, but I feel there are a couple points I want to clarify because I think that the discussion will head in the wrong, and I say wrong, uh, in a direction that doesn't really match what the, player, uh, the characters should understand. Um, oh, okay. So first, then simplest, you're not considered part of... Azurai's brood, because that would be a yeah, uh, horde. horde, horde. That's what I meant. So you are a treasure of his, a an object uh, that he owns in a certain yeah. way. Uh, this, as people have indicated to you, seems not great, um, and for obvious reasons, you are, in, uh, after a certain fashion, owned by a dragon. That could be bad, but like other currently engaged situations, it will also have benefits, namely the protection of the dragon. So, first and simplest is that correction. Not not brood, horde. Yeah. Um, but second, it was stated during your dealings with Azurai that you are to yeah. seal the other dragons and leave Elsimenth alone. That's what I thought. I, and I Azurai has promised you an audience with Elsimenth to discuss your alliance, as it were. Though he has yet to deliver on that promise. Um, a third was more of an implied thing, but the party did seem to get the sense that uh, Azurai wants to keep Elsimenth around for some reason. And as other people more familiar with dragons in the party have pointed out, this is unusual for chromatic dragons. Uh, Elsimenth is the, the leader, the owner, the forefather of the entire blue dragon brood, meaning that all the others would be in some way subservient to him. And the ambitions of most chromatic dragons puts them at odds with their sires. Um, so that's a thing that you know that is makes this unusual but yes so as sam said you could go and fight elsimenth and kill him the problem is you lack the blue scale 
So you, the party has learned that without the blue scale, death is extremely temporary for the uh, children of Tiamat. Elsimund will be back and pissed if you kill him and then don't seal him. Uh, two, Azurai has not expressed that he wants you to kill Elsmith, so that would put you at odds with Elsmith, who currently claims ownership of you. You're not sure what the extent of that, if there's any magical bond, uh, but there could be. So it could result, it could go poorly for you. But at the very least, it would put you at odds with this creature, and thereby, you know, break any agreement you have. So... Those are things that I want to be very clear about. The party did agree to help El Samenth be the last dragon standing in their in their dealing with Azurai. So fighting El Samenth and keeping your bargain with Azurai are conflicting goals. That's what you should know yeah. in this discussion. <laughs> We're gonna have to deal with El Samenth after. Yeah, well, originally that's what I was planning and thinking of. It was just the fact of, like, like what, out of character, Tristan just pointed out the whole pact that we said. We were not going to kill him or, or touch him right now. Or, he like, uh, Azurai said that we weren't to go after Azimuth. Um, so... That's what I was just trying to make sure we didn't. How our wording was in that situation, because, like I said, I want us to be honest to the Tridents, um, and convey that we really did not want that situation, and we don't want. I think we have to convince them that the only way we could get the other two scales was to trade the blue one. And yeah. that it was better to seal uh, three dragons than two. And that we don't... We we have the intention to address Azimuth. No, no we, we do not have the intention to address yeah. Elsimenth. <coughs> if we are I, going I to do that. Address, but address is also a very broad stroke. I don't think we should be... I don't think we should dissemble. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I think that I we should be very clear say that the Elsimuth that situation we... needs to be pushed till after the. But I, I think we should be very clear that we cannot be the ones that do anything that results in Elsimuth's sealing. We can't be involved in that. I think it is easier for somebody else in the future, perhaps even the near future, to be able to seal Elsimuth. But we cannot be involved in that. We're already fighting hordes of dragon already. What's the difference of dealing with the dragons after we deal with the three? Well, you know, like devils have the magical contracts and stuff. It's possible that this deal we've made with Elsimint or with Azra at the moment has some sort of magical bond that would prevent us from being able to. See, now that is what I was trying to get clarification with this discussion was the way the because you guys know that i'm not as well versed in magic as everyone else is and to understand like i do understand what happened like with riken dealing with the fey and losing his memory just for telling a story to a fey um about how he acquired his armor that did we with what we said or did there bind us in some way it is possible the people who know more about dragons have seemed more concerned about the nature of this agreement than we did when we made it So, and so it is worth looking into but until we have fully done that research, we cannot be involved in going against Azurai's desires when it comes to El Cement. No. And so we need to make it clear that we can't be involved in things. Perhaps that could change, but we should not make them think that it, that it will change. Yeah, so we can't promise we can something that we don't know we can 
yes, but so that that something we can state is like we can, we can say that we cannot be involved because we believe that we unintentionally or against our will made a bond with that dragon because of the nature of the deal we were forced to make. Yes, so that's why I that's why I wanted to figure out the wording with that so we could state that appropriately to the tritons. So now that you've uh, emphasized that a little bit to me, it kind of gives me an idea to understand that we kind of, on top of just getting the two scales, fucked ourselves with with addressing uh, Azurai at any given time. Addressing Elsamanth. Elsamanth, sorry. Yes. Of course, we we still don't know why Azurai is working with Elsamanth. As we stated, that seems counterintuitive to most of them. It's po possible he has some sort of plan, and Elsamanth is being alive as part of it, and that that won't always be the case. And we could ask the Tridents if they know more about the blue dragons than us and would possibly know any of this information either also also knowing this also information also because if they have the the blue dragons as an enemy you think they would have a deep possibly have a deeper understanding than we do of them i don't know how Frequently in the recent past, the Tritons that lived under the water there were in contact with blue dragons. Fair enough. Because it is a historical thing more than anything. Yeah, we weren't able to find out much, so there's not a whole lot of information on dragons in the first place. But I suppose the Triton knowledge might not have been in the places we were looking. Well, his his name is Clever Gill. Maybe he has something clever he could bring to light. <laughs> so very clever, the cleverest of gills. All of the clever gills. Uh. So, is that something we want to address tonight before we? find all the information about with the generals or do we want to just develop our dialogue with them while we uh, develop our what we want to say to them before we I think that the all. longer we delay with the Tritons the worse our situation appears or our um, actions up here. The more pissed they'll get. <clears throat> yeah, we should probably tell them soon. The sooner we tell them, the more chance we have of lessening their anger, possibly. All right. So, um, uh, I also feel that we should also divulge or keep them in the loop that we are going that we are addressing the other generals and that we will po I will possibly have to leave momentarily to speak with these generals of the Empire of the Four Queens. I think we should bring him in on that information also. What do you guys think about that? That seems entirely reasonable to uh, share with them. Yes. Especially since it might seem odd that all of a sudden we all disappear and they can't find us. Okay. <laughs> it does seem something that <laughs> He says, while in another plane of existence with the entire party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, like, we're here. Like, we'll immediately, like, we'll leave the mansion and be right there. <laughs> but they can't find you and you don't know if they're looking for you. <laughs> But Thandros knows that we go in here. Thandros <laughs> does have permission to enter here. They need us. Thandros can get us. 
Alright, so what I'd like to do then... I think Ruby um, does too. If I there's think anything I'm going to be Spare Dragon and listen on the bond while this conversation continues, because I don't have much to add to this. It's... So at least one of us is fighting the Works for me. I think and we should... If one of us is, then all of us are. Um, we don't have to... I'm... You guys also agree that we don't should need to have to elaborate on anything. Just inform, <laughs> inform the tridents that we have to leave just to address and coordinate with the generals from the Empire of the Four Queens. Um, just keep it short and sweet and just to the point that we have to go do this and we shouldn't be gone very long. Or we won't be gone very long. See, now um, that's a good command from a, from a valuable leader. Well, I mean, you're the one that's going to be telling them because... Well, no, but Evergill oh, really only wants to, to talk to you since you're the you're the general. <laughs> he doesn't uh, seem perturbed when we spoke up. <laughs> there's there's one thing about being or deciding this kind of stuff, but it's also taking the input of my my and the advice of my officers. Well, I know, but you're making it sound like we're going to go up to like all their lieutenant generals and whatever second commands they have and tell them as well. No, no, no. What we're doing is we're going to invite Clevergill and we're going to just inform him and then he will disperse the information depending on how he would... depending on the manner that they usually do and who he feels needs to be involved. Um, so... It's... We're going to go talk to him about the... Also, no, we're, anyways, just ask him, just tell yeah, him but we're gonna invite him. I think either here to the tavern or, um, I, I think we'll we would bring him to a room where we're a little private. It does. I don't. I don't believe it needs to be completely sealed, unless you guys feel that we need to to make our conversation completely private. I mean, does it really need to be private? The I think army we should... already knows that we're supposed to be meeting the Empire of the Four Queens. I mean, yeah, but the information about the Blue Dragon is another thing, though. <clears throat> oh, true. Yeah. That part, that part should be. So I, I, I definitely think we should do it in a room separate from everyone else. But it, I don't. Do you guys feel that we should? make it so no prying ears can hear what we're talking about. I, if that is what you wish, then you only need to go into our room. Oh, you, is that still up? I've been recasting Private Sanctum every day. And is that that's one that they, they don't need permission, they just have to walk in? Right. Okay. That's just a you you cast that on the area. Anything within it, then it takes effect. Um, All right. Well, then I think it would I can, be. Good. I we ruled that I was able to modify the mansion to allow Bess in, so we could also rule that I'm able to modify the mansion to allow Clever Gill in, if you would prefer to have it here. But if privacy is all that you are looking for, our room is very private i i think that would that be that suffice just bring them into the room um okay so As think, for the Empire of the Four Queens, we can be clear that we're intending to schedule a meeting with them tomorrow, where we will have to leave the island. Um, the exact time of that meeting is currently being discussed, and so we don't have it yet, but we'll inform him when we do. And we'll be traveling by magic, so it will be instantaneous and quick. For travel wise, uh, the travel wise, the meeting might not necessarily be quick. Quick. Um. Uh, 
and if we have any if anything important comes up we'll contact uh we should tell them we'll contact them through uh sending right if we um, need to if he oh I, actually we could ask him if he wishes to be updated or know anything um we can send to him like say clever guy wants to know let me know if you guys are going to be back or, or if you're going to be gone for the rest of the day into the next day. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I mean, I, yeah, before, I guess you can ask him if he's going to want any information. Otherwise, it seems like he kind of just wants to train <laughs> to get the army in shape. Well, he's very mil he he has a very structured military structure. I I don't I said that twice, but um the the way that they run such a tight ship, making sure that they have all the information they need to do things properly. Um well because we have well never mind. That's that that's actually true. The fact that um we don't need to because if he's just training for the next couple days yeah all we have to do is really just inform him that we're going to be leaving and if he needs anything of us before we leave and come back yep. that sounds reasonable to me and for coordination military wise we probably should get an idea how many oh well wait they probably would say well Tatsia had that information there been, was there any information about the size of the army or any details of, or anything that's stated in Tachi's documents that said that he talked to him about the size of their army and uh, and what resources they had in detail so that like they're not all like be like why didn't Tachi tell you about that oh my god uh, so that the who aren't like that uh, Empire, the generals of the Empire of Four Queens because, like, it's, uh, what I was thinking is, um, I, I want to let the Trident, or Clever Gale know, like, hey, this is also, well, we're going to reassess uh, the size of the army if everything's good to go. And, uh, and, because coordinating a large group of people military wise, we it's good that each general knows. How much each person has uh, for coordinating attacks, right? It's my first time being a general. That's why <laughs> everyone's input's important. I wasn't raised to be a general. Um, the voice in the sky. Was there information was about the number of troops and things that uh, Thotsia was expecting? Or if he was at least that, elevated to I mean, That information does also seem like a thing that we can return with. But I don't want to head out yes, a meeting. That's the plan. Valer Mendes, I don't want to ask that that, that question and then look at me and be like, why didn't Tatsi tell you? You know, kind of thing. You know what I mean? But our whole... Pulled away. Yeah, our whole lie right. is that we didn't talk to Tatsia about the yeah, transfer of power. Band for days? Oh, that, yes. Okay, so we are... Well, yeah, technically, we didn't talk to him about it because there was no transfer of power. We took over. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not necessarily uh, we were, we were, uh, uh, just a given life. power via Bahamut's will. Yeah, the transfer happened through Bahamut. Yes, we have claimed the divine mandate. <laughs> um. So okay, that okay. We that... should not go into the discussion with the Empire of the Four Queens completely without that being at least the expected line and then perhaps the discussion with the generals will go in a certain way and other things will come to light depending on what Thess has shared with them and what they believe and all of that but uh, 
they either will think that uh, Bahamut instructed us to take over and there was no discussion with Tatsuya about it or that we usurped Tatsuya and he didn't have a lot to say about the running of the army. So either position that we are in, in their minds, we don't have all of the information about their troops. <laughs> yes. Um, should, should we bring Siltaris when talking to them? Yes, uh, that was part of the, that was the first thing I think that Laramindus had mentioned um, about things that we needed to talk about later today was talking with Siltaris to ask if she would be willing to come with us to our meeting yeah. with the generals. Based on Leah's suggestion last session, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's come up, it's come up a couple of times and it was a good idea. So... I'm also thinking that with addressing it as talking about the Empire of the Four Queens before we state the Blue Dragon thing, um, so that it's he has a clear head with the first part before if he gets irritated or upset about the information we divulge about our contract <laughs> or possible contract. Yeah, I do not know enough about. Uh, a general clever guild to make a call about whether the order that he would be most likely to best receive the information. But well, you would, would you feel to say, I agree the to do the Empire of the Four Queens information before the Blue Dragon? It I mean, seems reasonable to me, but I don't know if he would preferred in a different way. I don't know the man. Yeah, but that's I don't know. I'm, I'm talking can... in a logical, reasonable way. In, in oh. man, without... A... Go ahead, Riker. All right. Well, no, you finish your thought, and then, uh, then Riker will chime us. No, the, I was... The, I did. It was the fact that, yes, I'm talking... It, it does that sound the most reasonable because we don't know him. Uh, well, first... On the one hand, you can say that maybe he would want his information first, the information that's most prevalent to him, which would be the Blue Dragon. On the other hand, it might not be very respectful to give him that information and then be like, oh, by the way, we're going to be leaving for a few minutes. So there's pros and cons to each side. I yeah. But out of the two, what do you think is the most is would be the best way to approach that right now? Would you would you think that it'd be better to do it the the way where it's Empire first, then Dragon, or Dragon then Empire? Um I mean probably I would do the Empire first, and then the Blue Dragon. You should Maybe tell him the Blue Dragon one that. first, brother. Oh my God. That way, Just if he gets that. mad, you can immediately leave and go do the other thing. Tatsuya, shut up! It didn't work? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. He just spoke okay. again. What can we do to stop that? You can't sequester this ass. Do we need to, like, resurrect him and kill him again? I can do that. He just said we can't sequester him. That's not but what I said. Say it right. In, wor in worse words. I, I'm going to reach into my bag. Okay and pull out the hopefully invisible pendant. <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to do that? Like, does is that how that works? It's not divination magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's my hand magic. I I suppose I I I I was under the impression that it was not tangible, but I guess it only does say invisible. 
Yeah, um, it is just invisible. Yeah, then, if it's in the bag of holding, you should be able to call it to your hand. Okay. Uh, is it... I, I, I hold it up. Is it invisible? So, like, Laramide is picking it you up. You can't see. Your fingers are empty. Okay. I think Lerman is just like, I don't understand you. <laughs> and he seems very, and he just like, is he says that to his hand. <laughs> he reached into his bag, held out his hand, and said that at it. And he seems extremely <laughs> exasperated. I, I think you upset your friend. Brother, you need to let Laramid understand what the hell's going on. Alright then, I can do that. Tell him what's happening. You need to tell me what's happening. Why, why is nothing working and you can still talk to me? Well, when you've eliminated the possible, whatever's left <laughs> must be the answer. But you eliminated me for damn possible. sure. If we eliminate the, the possible, all that's left is the impossible. And impossible is not supposed to be able to happen because it's impossible. Well, Did you right. say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Uh, let's see. Yes. <laughs> with Lerman, it says, with sufficiently dedicated magic, anything is possible. <laughs> see, he's trying to solve this from the magic side, and that's not going to work. He says you can't solve it from the magic side. Who says anything he says? Maybe Tatsuya doesn't I mean, actually talk I've, to you at all. I've done literally everything that you should work on the magic side, but I don't understand the divine power that is letting this happen. Oh, there's nothing divine about me, brother. Well... There was. Have we considered Wait. an anti-magic field on Riken at all times? What if... And hear me out. What if it's not Tachi at all, uh, talking to him? Alright, I'm listening. Or a devil? The devil that... or Because what made him an arch... Can we... See, no. How did he become an archfiend? I, I, I think that this would have to do with... Uh, the Lord of the Hells and whatever he did. So, or, that's dangerous, that Doc. Be... You should dissuade your friend from doing that. Or it could just be Maybe in his Tatsuya head. Maybe Tatsuya's soul is just inside Riken and not actually independent. Or it's just in his head. It could be imagining it. I'll always be with you in your heart, that, brother. Yeah. Maybe he's just crazy. Oh, God. <laughs> Lerminus asks for a loop. <laughs> 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 to look at the invisible crystal. Um, I mean, I can, I can make it. I can unsequester it since that didn't work. <laughs> my ninth level spell. Oof. No, my <laughs> simulacrum. <laughs> Your old simulacrum. No, my... I can't do it. I can't easily do. God damn it! Oh, that's <laughs> right. You can't end the sequester <laughs> unless you meet the uh, the requirements. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't. I can't right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was oh, yeah, too can't. cautious. <laughs> you were very cautious. You can't just end the sequester. Amazing. I can you dispel have... it. <laughs> can you? Uh, yeah. It can be dis It can be dispelled. I mean, it's not like an attempt to dispel it. That's why it becomes <laughs> invisible and undivinable, so that like anybody who isn't already in possession of a thing, knowing it's sequestered, isn't really going to know to dispel. That's yeah. why dispel is allowed to work, because you have to meet a lot of other requirements before you're even allowed to try to dispel it. You have to yeah, know like it's you there. You need to know that the magic is there, which means you know where the thing is, Yeah, which is very difficult without vision and divination magic. Yeah. So if you can see invisibility, would that... Did you see it then? Uh, I cannot cast see invisibility. That's well, an yeah, interesting but somebody question. Could Probably oh, not, because uh, it's divination magic. Yeah, it is divination magic. So if it stops all divination magic, it would stop mm. that too. 
Yeah, and he is divination magic because uh, Kate's character has it. She's a divination wizard. Um, but it's it can't be targeted. So hold on. Um. But is C invisibility can't be targeted target self? By divination magic. Yeah. yeah. It is. Well, but seeing invisibility isn't targeting it. You just can see. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you could see it with C invisibility. Because that's not targeting it with a divination spell or perceiving it through a scrying sensor created by a divination spell. Yeah. So wait, 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 hold funny. on, hold on, hold on. Uh hold on. <laughs> it's kinda of like a um, gathering thing. <laughs> you have uh C invisibility, I remember. God damn it, Ah, uh, okay, now this That's specific funny. this says creature. No. Is it which sides you can see true form of any shame changer or creature concealed by illusion or transportation magic while the creature is within 30 feet? So you can, uh, or view one within light of sight, but that's creature, right. so it wouldn't count for that. No, it's not a creature. Hmm. If you just had like see invisibility on for whatever reason and you happen to wander over, it's like, hey, look at this. Everybody else is like, <laughs> what? So Look, well, if you've been thinking Cyrus, like a general, Cyrus brother, I wouldn't have had to say anything. Oh, that's a good point. That's a very good point. And thought of that. Is it illusion or transportation magic? Uh, it's, it should be transportation. It's polymorph. Yeah, then. As long as I'm within 30 feet and so can see you, then yeah, I see you as... So from <laughs> like, outside of 30 like... feet, you see a dragon. Inside of 30 yeah. feet, you see a dragon. That's yeah. hilarious. You're just like floating in the sky in the middle of where the dragon is. <laughs> Beat your fleshy wings. <laughs> just T-posing. <laughs> <laughs> like goddamn this glitch again. <laughs> D D and D as if made by Bethesda. <laughs> A person like activates this ability and then just everyone around them is just T posing and looks different. Like what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> is everyone like, a shapeshifter? Their face just disappear and you can just see their eyes and. <clears throat> <laughs> what I find even funnier is like when I get a small detail out of place, Philly's like gonna make a shadow image of like where the thing's slightly off overlaid over top of just me. Yeah. Because you still do like <laughs> see like some of the illusion, like it's a ghostly image around the person so that you're not being totally screwed by seeing the wrong thing, even though it's the truth. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Because it's so it, it, this thing is so weird when we're talking about things that has different shape and form. Yeah. If it's just like alter self, yeah. then it would make sense. But so, and, yeah, no, I think yeah. so. Usually, the way illusions work, even without using magic, like when somebody casts an illusion spell, uh, very often you get the ability to roll an insight check against it. And if you succeed on the yeah. insight, you become aware of what the reality is, but you can still see the ghostly image that they're trying to make you believe. So, so it's if generally someone... an intelligence check okay. on insight. Oh, is yeah, that? So if someone it's polymorphs... Specifically. Oh, investigation. Okay. So if someone polymorphs someone else into a frog and put them in a jar, mm -hmm. do I see them, like, cramped into the jar? <laughs> you just, you just see them just, like, sitting like a frog, just, like, with the frog in their just center. Just tiny or something? Yeah. So, like, wherever tiny, the jar yeah. would be like, for the frog yeah. to be at the center. You know? They're just T-posing, and the jar is inside them now. <laughs> now what I find hilarious happening. about this is Leah should absolutely come and and watch me Gross. melt Mendes once and tell me what it looks like. Oh no! <laughs> oh god, no! <laughs> <laughs> Alarmandus <laughs> team. No, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> hey, Chester, I got something for you. Oh, what, you what? What is it? Tatsia starts laughing. Ah, ha, ha. And then he says, It was me, Brendan, the whole time. <laughs> you know, that wouldn't be a bad plot twist. <laughs> I'd buy it. <laughs> Jesus. Turns out Reckon is just crazy. Crazy with Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> is that a is that a green glow to Reichen's eyes? 
Because there is no stopping that son of a bitch. <laughs> Maybe there's someone you need to talk to, brother. Play Scrabble with. <laughs> Maybe we should ask. And who would that be, game. brother? Little you. Little me. And in your head, you just hear, I'm gonna worship God! Oh, God, no. Aw, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> I was never this much bigger than him when I, we were kids. Now I can nook you <laughs> even better. No. Get out. What are you doing? Like, no. What? Talk to your, to your child. Why? Explain to him why you killed me. I didn't kill you. Brother, lying does not become either of us. Vendar killed you. Oh my goodness. Now you're arguing semantics in front of a child? I don't know what that word means! <laughs> I mean, you are the one that uh, went after him when he had giant explosives. What, what's a giant explosive? It's really cool, fiery things. Fire's not as cool as lightning! Oh God, why are we doing this? <laughs> what? Why are we doing this, brother? You're the one hearing me. I'm not hearing you. Wait. <laughs> Maybe I'll do something, Cyrus. Maybe it is, Bren. Oh, my God. Child, child self, go back. Go back deep into the recesses of my brain. Are you saying this out loud? <laughs> uh, no, that one's that one's in his mind because he's talking to himself in his mind. But I don't understand. We love Tatsuya. Why would you kill him? Because he was being bad. Was he stealing cake again? Mother always hated it when he did that before dinner. Yep. He was being a very bad person. But that doesn't seem like a reason to kill them! I don't want to be grow up to be a bad person like you! <laughs> I mean, he was trying to kill us, too, so... To get the cake?! Kind of. The cake of the world. Why are you lying to yourself still after all these years, brother? What do you mean after all these years? It just happened not that long ago. I wasn't trying to get cake. I was trying to make the world better. Yeah, you were trying to have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Is he trying to make the world better? Then why'd you stop him? It wasn't the right way of making the world better. Well, how do you do it then? The way that we're doing it now. By following Gord? Yes. And punching bad guys? Yeah, keep following Gord. And punching bad punching guys? Punching bad guys, right. yes. So why was Tatsu a bad guy? Because he wasn't following Gord. He never followed Gord! <laughs> I know, so he was bad. Mom and Dad are bad! <laughs> yeah, they're dead too. <laughs> Why'd you kill our parents?! They are, they are dead because of him, so... WHAT?! And you feel the child inside you looking shockedly at the Tatsuya inside you. At this he says, Unfortunately, that is true. Their deaths are my fault. See, I had to avenge our parents. But it was all to make a better world. Small sacrifices. A few lives against possibly millions. I wouldn't necessarily say that it would be a few lives. A few, a few hundred, even a couple thousand against millions? Brother! An end to the tyranny of the Dragon Queen forever? But... We weren't 
been attacked by the Dragon Queen this whole time. Until you started unsealing the dragons. Then who were you being attacked by? Say it. No one. No one? Mom and Dad always said that the Dragon Queen's bad. Yes, she is bad. Oh. But whatever did she do while we were growing up? Well, there were there were places that got attacked by dragons. That's why we had the, the army that Dad was in. Then. I remember he would he would go away for a, a long time, like days and weeks, and he would come back and Mom would be really happy that he wasn't dead. But we certainly didn't need to unleash the offspring of Tiamat to take out dragons here and there that might have attacked. There are a lot more dragons attacking now. But you killed Tatsuya to stop this? Yes. And did it work? It will. But not yet? No, not yet. <clears throat> we killed our we brother face... and it didn't work? We will face the dragon soon. We're gonna face Bahamut. In judgment gonna... for killing our brother. No, we're not. I don't think we I have... could do that. I don't think I could kill Tatsuya, even to oh, my... stop him doing a bad thing. Well, why couldn't we talk we to did. him? We tried talking to him. We did? He wouldn't listen. He didn't listen? No. I was set on my path. I believed that it was the right thing to do. I still believe that it would serve the greater good. But. You. And your friends, when you grow up, are very convicted. And perhaps you will find a better way than I did. But I wonder if you won't lose more people than I would have. That is yet to be seen. Brother, do you feel no remorse at all? Even an inkling? For ending my life? I have some remorse that we couldn't see eye to eye, and I had to kill the last of my family. You shed a tear for five minutes three days ago. I don't have the time currently to remorse. Because we have a world to save. I'm reviving him too. The remorse can't happen until that is done. I think that if you don't feel your feelings, when you have this moment, you kind of get this sense that he's sweeping his arm around the very peaceful garden <laughs> around you, then it will affect your ability. To live up to your convictions for which you so callously ended my life. It was far from callous. Yeah.
You know what I might have done? Had I the chance. What? I might have thanked you, brother, for ending my service to the devil. It should never have begun. I should have thanked you. I won't say that you were always the better man than me, because I'm not sure that's true, but in that moment, certainly, your light outshone my own. So, for the Tatsuya who didn't thank you in his last breaths, let me Thank you for freeing me from Tiamat, brother. You're welcome, Tatsuya. Perhaps once this is all over, you can see the peaceful world that we will have made. I hope that he gets to do that. May I make a recommendation to you, brother? Sure. After you spend a little time with your feelings, you should arrange a service, a ritual, to see me off. Not for him using that gem that you sequestered. <laughs> Dumbass. For me. What are you talking about? Your You're brother. Not... <laughs> your brother. Was... You're not my brother. I'm your brother, and as far as it matters. That little piece of your brother that lives in your heart as long as you live. Your memory of him. And the disappointment in the man you thought he was. Bury that man. And find a way to live with who your brother is. When he lives again. Do it for me. Riken, for our parents, who neither of us could save, though perhaps I should have. So, with that, I will call the end of the session. You got some things to think about between here and next session, Riken. Oh my god, I'm so confused now. <laughs> You're so confused. Alright, well, we'll see if we can't put that confusion to bed later on. Until next time, on Everybody Loves Riken. Bye, stream. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.